Welcome back everybody. As you can see I've got a few items laid out on the bench which we will be going through today but before we start there I've just got two little schematics to show you. Okay now these two schematics were requested by Jeff. The one at the top is the 2KV MOT power supply that I built. The one at the bottom is the Tesla hairpin circuit. You can also see that there is a um, dotted line here joining this capacitor terminal to this capacitor terminal it'll work with or without that short circuit um, have a play around with it you'll see what I mean now I've taken the time out over the last few weeks to read a couple of textbooks on high voltage transformers and high voltage measurement now although those textbooks provide a lot of useful information I was still left with a few questions that couldn't be answered by any book so I made a few calls and booked myself in for a private tour at a couple of transformer manufacturers one was a, a relatively small company and the other one was one of the largest transformer manufacturers in the country building power and distribution transformers generators and I'm talking big stuff big stuff um, I went down there, took the tour, I was able to walk away with a few goodies so um, I'll show you what those are right now. As you can see I've got a coil of copper here which is covered in uh, like a cellulose based paper product. It's just literally like a paper insulation. Um, I've also got a few sticks of this stuff here which again is the same cellulose based product in a sh laminated sheet form and then I've got individual sheets that you can see there um, I've got some larger ones all put away but yeah they're about two or three mil thick now all of those Materials there are compatible with the mineral oil that they insulate their transformers with and I've just got to drop a tin off to this guy and he's going to give me a 5 litre tin of mineral oil um, So I'll be able to make my own transformers. Now the other thing is that this copper here is not standard cheapo copper. It's actually what they call electrolytic copper which is a high purity copper that has been purified further by electrolysis, um, so increasing its conductivity. So this is good quality stuff, industry standard materials. Now the other thing I got when I was there was this Nomex diamond dot paper. It is an in another form of insulation which they use between the layers of the wines on their transformers and during the bake out process these little diamond dots actually melt and they adhere to the layers of your windings in your transformer and therefore hold the windings together nice and tightly. Um, they, this sort of stuff ranges in thickness from about 100 micron up to roughly 700 micron. Um, this is one of the thicker versions so it's a very good insulating material and yeah it's good stuff. Got a whole off cut roll of that so I think that's roughly 450 millimeters tall and as you can see there would be a few meters on that roll. Now the second transformer manufacturer that I went to visit was not able to give me any materials as such. Uh, they were mainly a batch manufacturing company uh, so that was understandable but he did offer me a 500 amp rectifier module. Uh, it was too big to take away so I asked him if I could strip it down, which he agreed to, and these are some of the parts that I salvaged from that rectifier. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of these 150 amp, 400 volt fuses, I've got a bunch of fuse links here, I've got a panel mount volt and amp meter, and then there was also two of these boards, each of which has three resistors and three capacitors, and the capacitors are rated to 2 microfarad, 440 volts, and the resistors are 33 ohm, 30 watt resistors, and so I have six of each of those. 
and I've just got to organise a time to go back and strip the diodes out because I didn't exactly have all the tools I needed with me um, so I'll probably be going back there next week sometime now I also went to visit a manufacturer of zinc oxide nanoparticles amongst other products that they make uh, the reason I wanted some zinc oxide nanoparticles is so that I can use the electrical properties of these particles in a dusty plasma environment in conjunction with my longitudinal e electricity experiments um, as soon as I get my custom little chambers made up uh, so I've got the zinc oxide nanoparticles here and while I was there I also picked up a small sample of sodium benzoate now the sodium benzoate has a particle size of roughly you know, 2 to 10 microns whereas the zinc oxide has an average particle size of about 36.9 nanometers um, so as you can see here most of the particle size falls within the 30 to 50 nanometer range there's also a small amount in the 100 to 200 nanometer range but you can see that you know, well over 90 percent of it is in this band here um, so yeah that'll be something to look forward to playing with um, I won't open them now because it's really no different to looking at some talcum powder but um, we will have a look at how they perform under a dusty plasma environment um, so that'll be pretty cool looking forward to that but um, I've got to finish making these vacuum chambers and I've got a whole bunch of other videos that I've been meaning to do so I'll try and get all of those out the way before we move forward so we can uh, proceed with a clean slate um, until then thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave comments